Darius Perkins was released from prison in early July, having served 23 years of a 35-year mandatory minimum sentence for selling crack cocaine. In 2018, a new law retroactively reduced such long sentences for crack cocaine offences. I ain't gonna try to play no victim, but 35 years was, I think, was, was harsh. The U.S. has the highest prison population in the world. Incarceration exploded in the 80s with the beginning of the so-called war on drugs. And because black communities are intensively targeted by law enforcement, it was African Americans who were arrested and jailed disproportionately, even though white drug use was equal or more than that of blacks. Joe Biden took credit for the 1986 law that mandated the same sentence for five grams of crack possession as 500 grams of cocaine. And he followed that with the 1994 crime bill, which mandated federal mandatory life sentences for repeat drug offences and encouraged U.S. states to do the same. The devastation of African-American communities through the drugs crackdown was apparent, yet it rejected recommendations to end the sentencing disparity for crack and ignored calls to focus more on crime prevention than punishment. We do everything but hang people for jaywalking in this bill. Mandatory minimum sentences passed during Joe Biden's tenure increased the federal prison population by about 800 percent. And there's a pretty direct correlation between mandatory minimum sentences and federal prison growth. I think the causal link is pretty clear and undeniable. In fairness to Biden, he wasn't alone in advocating harsh sentencing, and it was electorally popular. But the issue has become controversial in 2019 because he campaigned on his crime legislation until relatively recently, despite the obvious social devastation. And his recent apologies have been filled with qualifications. And he said, we're talking about things that happened a long time ago. Barack Obama trusted me. That should be enough of a reference. No, it ain't enough. Darius is now 46 and adjusting to a world that's changed since he was jailed at 23. But while billions of dollars have been spent on prisons and police due to Biden's legislation, the lack of opportunity in his hometown remains vivid. If anything, things got worse, we don't even have a, a store. Yeah, this would be the center of our town. Nobody wants to wake up in the morning and say, I want to deal drugs or break the law, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, we want opportunities. We want to be, able to be, you know, middle class. We want to own a home. You know what I'm saying? Be able to put our children in college. We want to do the things that everybody else in society has. And still, thousands remain in prison, sentenced to life without parole for non-violent offenses under legislation Joe Biden wrote and for which he passionately took credit. Shea Britansi, Al Jazeera, Sandy Level, Virginia.